Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and Carlsbad 1907 tournament. So today I would like to show you another game from Carlsbad and this time against Oldrich Duras. So Oldrich Duras with the white pieces, Akiba Rubinstein with the black pieces again. And I show you already on my channel two games against Oldrich Duras and especially the first one, which is part of the endgame studies and endgame books a lot of books about this endgame uh, was written so as an example so if you haven't seen that game check it over there because this was one of my first videos on this channel so it took me 40 minutes to actually show you the end game uh, of course i was a little bit slower um, however you can watch this video with you know with the speed 1.5 1.75 uh, or so on uh, but really really great game and if you want to improve your end game understanding definitely um, a great example to calculate what could happen in all the variations however here we have 1907 carlsbad and old Duras has a chance to play again against uh, Akiba Rubinstein. So he has a chance for the revenge. Uh, we have e4 again and Akiba Rubinstein didn't go this time for the French defense, but we have e5. Knight f3, knight c6, knight f3 and knight c6. So um, we have four knights game. Uh, bishop b5 and now just for your information, if you follow this saga, a couple of uh, videos earlier, um, it was like a couple of days earlier in the same tournament, uh, Akiba Rubinstein played exactly the same opening, the same line against David Janowski. So he didn't invent knight d4 yet. It's uh, Rubinstein variation in the in the four knights game. Uh, so he just played what he knew at that time. Later he invented and he played this really really um, often. Uh, but we have bishop b4. We have also the castle. We have castle. We have d3. Uh, bishop takes on c3. B takes on c3. And now d6. Bishop g5 pinning the knight. Now we have queen e seven um, and now if you remember the game I show you against David Janowski David Janowski connected the rooks he played queen d2 he wanted to keep this battery just in case if Akiba Rubinstein maybe in some moment would like to play h6 but of course in this situation it's not possible so Janowski played queen d2 here um, Duras played rook e1 but if you don't remember this game also you should check that because it's a very very important maneuver also very very inspi inspirational we had knight d8 at that time uh, against Janowski and then uh, bishop was not pinning anything. So bishop c4, bishop e6 and after bishop b3, Akiba Rubinstein exchanged the bishops here. Uh, we also have knight e6 threatening this, um, this bishop. Bishop h4, h6, rook f2, e1, uh, a6 and now this maybe you will remember if you watched that video already that Akiba Rubinstein um, uh, got the position where the center was quite blocked but he found the maneuver one of the first probably the first maneuver in the chess history uh, where someone moved the queen this way Remaneuver the queen uh, it took four moves uh, to get to the you know better position and some initiative so very very nice games uh, you definitely should check it out and I just gave you the link uh, however Oldrich Duras played rook e1 uh, so this is the same tournament and a couple of days difference Oldrich Duras uh, saw that game against Janowski here he went rook e1 uh, and Akiba went for the same uh, idea here knight d8 pretty natural one the bishop uh, is you know pointing nowhere and the knight gonna attack the bishop on the g5 so pretty logical one uh, but now we have d4 Oldrich duras goes uh, for attack in the center we have knight e6 as planned and now bishop c1 which looks like very very weird move uh, but after c6 we have also bishop f1 and now believe me or not but 21st century theory 
um, says that these moves are the best. So if you see this this position, these moves are still played in the 21st century, and we have over uh, 60 games in the public database. So um, definitely well known uh, continuation. Uh, now we have Queen C7. We have Knight H4. So first maneuver by white and um, there are a couple of ideas this knight can come for example to f5 uh, but also it's possible to play something like g3 uh, and then f4 and attack the pawn on the e5. So these are two ideas. We have rook e8 and now just I would like to tell you that nowadays in the 21st century we have a couple of games in the database where indeed knight f5 was played but I don't see that like really promising because after knight f8 um, let's say queen f3 exchanging the bishop for this knight queen f5 knight g6 and uh, we have this position where black have like pretty comfortable position and it's you know two bishops against two knights so it's not always that great to play with the two bishops against two knights especially if the knights manage to get some uh, you know central positions it's a uh, con they control really a lot of squares so that's one of the way of playing that. Uh, another way is, I just said, is like g3. g3, um, then this knight f8 is pretty uh, normal here. And after bishop g5, queen e7. Otherwise, white can exchange for this knight and uh, yeah, mess up the pawn structure. So usually bishop g2, h6, and white have to decide what to do with the, with the bishop. Usually uh, goes to the d2 or back to c1 as this pawn is a little bit compromised the position of the of the black king but it's nothing you know fancy black still stands uh, pretty good in this position so these uh, are the modern ways of dealing with this position Olgic Duras however went for queen d3 pretty logical it's almost uh, connecting the rooks but there is still the bishop there so something has to be done about that uh, but also potentially it's watching at the f5 this way so you know any moves like you know g3 f4 definitely are on Olgic Dura's radar uh, we have bishop d7 uh, making a space for the for the rook we have g3 rook a to d8 we have bishop g2 and now bishop goes back to c8 so the maneuver of the bishop making a space for the rooks now the rook stays uh, exactly in the center uh, but Olgic Duras has a chance to actually uh, strike in the center with another pawn. We have f4, e takes on f4, g takes on f4, and now knight f8. Uh, and here we have f5, locking the bishop, so bishop has to find another way of development. Probably uh, this will be good. And also this knight has to, you know, go somewhere. So where would you go with the knight? Akiba Rubinstein played h6, uh, planning to move the knight to h7 we have bishop d2 connecting the rooks now uh, bringing the knight to h7 um, and now it looks like queen g3 would be you know pretty natural move with the idea of uh, getting the pawn on h6 uh, however very simple knight um, h5 and white have to do something with this with this queen if the queen goes to the g4 we would have something like threefold repetition uh, so nothing fancy uh, so far in the in this position uh, but we have knight f3 so white just moved this pawn to f5 already and now this knight gonna support the, the e5 move which looks like a pretty good move uh, akiba rubinstein doesn't care about that he played rook e7 uh, and actually e5 immediately would be pretty okay move uh, it's quite complicated line however after d takes on e5 knight e5 rook e5 uh, of course this pawn is pinned so rook e5 and after knight g4 black actually can back the exchange so the the point is that if the rook moves then of course the queen pointing on h2 so probably bishop f4 and after knight e5 bishop e5 probably queen e7 and so on 
So blacks still have to find a way how to develop this bishop. So definitely white stands pretty good in this position and have much easier game. Um, rook f1 in some moment, maybe even um, f6. For now, the, the knight is guarding, but you know, if the knight moves, then can be very, very unpleasant. So black need to consolidate couple of moves to consolidate the position. Not at, that easy to play. So e5 was not so bad. However, we have h4 uh, and now this is a little bit defensive move because what Olzik Duras wants to do is bring the knight uh, to, the, to the h2 just to defend the pawn on the e4. First he wants to defend and then maybe also this, this knight could jump here to defend this pawn. So he already uh, went for the quite passive position. Uh, we have c5, we have knight h2 as planned, we have rook d to e8, so Akiba Rubinstein already attacking this pawn three times. Uh, for now it's defended three times as well, uh, but you see already the bishop uh, can come to this diagonal and try to attack, and uh, white has the time to actually uh, bring more defenders of not. We have rook e3, so Olgic Duras make a space to double the rooks, pretty natural plan. We have b6, and now we don't have rook a to e1, which actually is the best move and the most logical move in the position. Um, the point is, if Olgic went for rook a to e1, maybe he was afraid that c4 can be played. Uh, but also keep in mind that this pawn on e4 is defended already three times and it's attacked three times. So there is no problem. White have a lot of time to move the queen, for example, to f1 and after bishop b7, just bring the queen to f4, still defending. So we have four uh, defenders. So completely no problem. And if queen c6 is played, so one more attacker on this uh, on this pawn, uh, of course, e5 cannot be played because of the checkmate here. So just keep in mind that this is very dangerous position. Uh, white can play d5. And it doesn't look so good uh, because, of course, after queen c5, king h1, uh, there is the huge hole here on the e5. However, this is the best what white could get in this position. Uh, but Olzik Duras went for bishop f3 now bishop f3 and now if you can imagine this battery uh, is not that dangerous so for example e5 could be played and this bishop would actually look on the on the queen so it looks like a pretty logical move however now uh, Akiba Rubinstein had the chance to strike in with c4 and now you see that already that the queen has to be moved uh, and it cannot be moved the same way like before have to be moved to e2 as a third defender of the pawn on e4. The problem is that after bishop b7, now white have to go for the e5 because there are already um, four defenders, the queen gonna come. So in this position, actually e5 could be played and this is probably the best move in the position. However, after d takes on e5, bishop b7, it's pretty complicated here. Uh, e takes on d4, actually black wins a bit of material here yes there is some rook e7 rook e7 queen f3 now black can get back the material and now white doesn't need to uh, exchange the queens but of course can uh, and and get this position so at the end black would have one extra pawn which is not much however black also have only two pawn islands so it's very very easy to play while white actually have this isolated pawn this isolated pawn this isolated pawn and also this pawn island so four pawns islands a lot of uh, actually targets for black it shouldn't be a problem to win the game so here black had this chance to win probably win the game with c4 but akiba improved the position uh, of the last piece bishop b7 and this actually gave the chance to olgic duras to play d5 lock the position but he didn't like to uh, play that what would happen is i would like to just show you what could happen uh, of course knight d7 this is pretty natural continuation but white would have something like knight g4 and now if h4 is played and the knight goes black gonna have the weakness which is not that easy to actually defend as this pawn um, is defending you know uh these squares the white squares so black probably would just exchange the the knight 
knights and after exchanging we ha we would have this position of course black have a very simple plan bring the queen focus on this uh, pawn then maybe the knight jump with the knight to this hole in e5 and so on so also definitely black has much easier gameplay but white also have um, you know some space advantage could try definitely uh, try to get some counterplay However, now Olgic Duras went for rook a to e1, but now it's too late. Now it's too late. Akiba uh, finally plays c4, and now we have queen e2. So this pawn has uh, four defenders, uh, four attackers, and I would like you to actually pause the video. This is the critical moment where white actually uh, seems like they hold the position, but black have the moves which uh, can actually break the position and win it. So while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? That's actually pretty nice intellectual riddle to uh, figure out what to play and uh, what lines could actually appear and it's quite complicated however if you take this pawn with any of the pieces it's okay so knight is okay the bishop is okay even the rook can take on the on the e4 um akiba rubinstein went for bishop e4 which which is pretty much very good move and now the point is first what you would have to calculate what if white actually uh, take this bishop so of course knight e4 and what next because white just lost the pawn and have to continue if white decide just to uh, win some of the pieces the problem is that the queen is before the rook uh, if the rook is on the on the e2 that would be different story but with the queen here this is what would happen at the end of the day we would have this position where black has the queen for the rook and the bishop and a lot of weaknesses again all of these weaknesses very easy targets um, actually for black queen so that's one of the option if queen g2 which looks pretty logical now we have the attack we have you know three uh, pieces attacking the knight now we could have simply knight d2 and let's say queen d2 let's say exchange everything and we would have this position where the material is almost equal but again this is one pawn difference but it's huge difference there is no pawn on the on the g file so these two pawns are isolated this pawn easy target easy target easy target and black gonna easily win that game uh, so Olgic Duras didn't take it, he just said, okay, I'm gonna lose the pawn, uh, let's just keep the pieces on the board. So he played queen g2, now attacking the, the bishop again, uh, but now we have the support, d5 supporting the bishop, uh, we have bishop c1, now making a space for the queen to uh, actually watch at c2, we have bishop f3, we have knight f3, uh, and now rook e3. We have bishop e3, rook e3 doesn't really matter. We have bishop e3, Olgic Duras at least want to have the rooks on the, on the board. Uh, but now we have very, very strong move. You can actually try to find what would you play in this position. The best move in the position is rook e4, rook e4, lifting the rook. Very nice threat, winning the queen threat. So Olgic Duras went for queen h3. There are no good moves here already for white. We have rook g4, king h1, and now rook g3 attacking the queen and attacking um, the knight. So that's one of the options. Now, if queen f1, we would have, of course, knight e4 and the attack could continue, just bring another knight um, to the g4 and this is just, you know, a hopeless position for white. Uh, however, Olgic Duras tried to be very, very sneaky and he played queen h2, pinning the rook. So the rook is pinned and if the rook is moved, then of course the queen is on c7 unprotected. So very sneaky move. Uh, Akiba Rubinstein, however, went for knight g4 attacking the queen. And now the point is, if the queen still wants to keep an eye on the, on the knight, then we would have queen e2. Uh, but then rook f3 wins pretty easily because the rook cannot be taken. If the rook is taken, then of course we're gonna have the checkmate. 
So Aldrich Duras tried to be sneaky again. He played bishop g1, saying, okay, take my queen. Akiba Rubinstein did that. We have bishop h2, and now the rook is pinned again. So this time uh, white is going to win the rook or not. Uh, Akiba Rubinstein played queen f4, uh, attacking the knight. So something has to be done about that. We have knight f1. Um, and now queen h4 in, in this position, Oldrich Duras resigned. And he resigned because he even cannot take the rook. And that means Akiba Rubinstein has the queen for the bishop. So definitely not the way uh, he would like to continue the game. He can deliver one check, but of course doesn't really matter. And now he has the problems. If he moves the rook, for example, to pick up the pawns, we're gonna have the checkmate here. Uh, if he tries to move the, the knight, then we're gonna have rook h3, winning this bishop and of course the game. And finally, if rook e2, we're gonna have uh, simply knight d7 and the knight gonna join the party and win the game. All black has to do is exchange a couple of pieces. If white helps with that, uh, for example, exchange the pieces, simply just exchange the pieces. Um, and now black gonna pick up one pawn, second pawn. Uh, all of these pawns also gonna fall and, and so on. So it's no point of playing. That's why after queen h4, Oldrich Duras resigned. So another one game by um, Akiba Rubinstein. I, I'm going to show you maybe two, three more games in this tournament. Definitely uh, at least three games, maybe three, maybe four, because there are some historical, very important games. Also, there is some anecdote at the end of the tournament, which is pretty funny. So if you want to um, see that, of course, subscribe, smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one